Lahitana here, and this week we'll be talking about Quabbin Reservoir, which actually means meeting of many waters, and that was um, after the Native American chief that lived over there, and uh, he was named Nani Quabbin. So we'll be talking a little bit about that and the uh, spirits that reside there. We also headed over to Dana Common, which was one of the towns that was cleared out to make the reservoir. And so Dana Common is kind of a ghost town now. All of the buildings have been torn down and that has cleared space so that they could uh, basically flood the land and surrounding it to make the reservoir. Quabbin is made up of four towns uh, that in 1938 were disincorporated and they were the town of Dana, which is the Worcester County, Enfield, Greenwich, and Prescott. And that is all, they are all located in Hampshire County. Dana was actually incorporated in 1801, and it was disincorporated on April 28, 1938, um, as part of the creation of Quabbin Reservoir. Uh, on the site of Dana, there is a sign that says, to all those who sacrifice their homes as a way of life. And that was erected by the Dana Reunion in 1996. One of the interesting stories about Dana Common, and uh, that was one of the first foundations on the right side of the road, uh, just before entering the gate, is location of a home that was uh, last owned by Sheridan Hall, but the original owner was um, went by the name of Snow, and his nickname was Popcorn, because according to stories, that was his favorite food, that's all he ate, and when he passed away, he asked that his casket be filled with popcorn. Now, we're not sure if that is actually true, but the other interesting story is he was so afraid of being buried alive that he had a metal casket made with a glass top, and he asked the undertaker to check in on him. At that point, his wife, or his widow, told the undertaker and the doctor that they didn't have to check in because she was absolutely sure that he had passed, and so his body went unchecked. But when the town was um, disincorporated, they moved the grave and the house, and rumor has it that Popcorn's spirit walks along the roads and is very disgruntled that his uh, casket and his house were moved. Uh, so when we went over there, we actually brought a little bit of popcorn for Popcorn. How the waters claimed all And made islands from the tallest of hills And the families and neighbors Though scattered like paper All that's in my memory still And I walk down there sometimes Through the reservoir pines To listen to the wind on the waves And it's like nothing has changed I can still hear the strains Of the last song the orchestra played Come, come take my hand Twirl to the band round the old town hall April 3rd, 1955, there's a nor'easter that blew into uh, Massachusetts. And there was a pilot, he was flying an F-94B starfighter, uh, and he was flying over what he presumed to be Quabbin Reservoir. The winds were really bad, he knew he was running out of gas, and so he figured if he was above Quabbin, what he could do is he could eject himself and the plane would crash into the water and harm no one. So he did just that. He ejected himself. When the plane, he didn't hear any huge crash. He didn't hear anything. He didn't see a fireball or anything like that. 
Uh, so he kept going. He went to like a nearby town and he was fine. No one was hurt. It was just him and the plane. So years go on and, and he just assumes that the plane has always been crashed into the water. Well, the plane was actually found five years later, but no one told him until 45 years later. So the government actually drove him in to see the wreckage, and he planned to visit it once more after um, he had visited it the first time, but he died soon after he saw the wreckage and was able to verify that it, indeed it was his plane. So what happened was the aircraft flew into um, a wooded area and just hit the ground with such a perfect impact that it actually you know, smashed the plane but actually made these almost sculptural uh, pieces out of the, the metal wreckage. The government man started building that dam And he told us it was all for the best they were tearing it down They were drowning our town In the name of progress, I guess Oh, we held our heads proud Until the state bought us out And there wasn't much else we could do But go down the town hall To the last fireman's ball it was decked in red, white, and blue The last place we quit, we hit was Quabbin Reservoir itself, and we actually left a few offerings there for the spirits there. There's a few different tribes that um, lived on that land, and so right now we are working on a case that involves Na Native American tribes, and it's the same tribe, one of the same tribes that uh, lived on that land. So we left a few offerings. In the video, you can see a little bit, but um, most of them just sort of sunk into the leaves, so you can't see a lot. But what we did is we did a little ritual over there to help us with this working and to kind of create um, peace within the tribe that we were working with and for the persons that we were working for. They are trying to uh, get recognized and um, within their own tribe and having some trouble and they've also been having some trouble with some other things as well. So it was important for us to work with those spirits of that land and to um, kind of get a balance and an idea and a recognition of that person for that person. That way when they go to their tribe's elders they will be recognized because the spirits will be helping them along the way. So there's a little bit of footage of that as well. And when you are working with a tribe, it's important to kind of uh, look them up and understand who you're dealing with and what their offerings are and you know what kind of foods they, they ate and what they did themselves to survive during that time, uh, why the land was named that way, um, or why the land was named what it was, and you know, to understand the trails over there. There are some Native American burial grounds over there, but we did not take footage of those. Uh, if you do end up walking around there and, um, and exploring it a little bit, just always be respectful. Always bring something to show the spirits that, that do reside there, that you come there on their terms and you are being respectful and peaceful with them.
So next up is Aunt Caroline Dye, and uh, some say that she was born in 1843. There's a few different dates that when she was born, and she lived until 1918. And she was known as this really amazing seer who would do readings, not charge for them, and she had clients all over the South. And the two things that she would not read on were love and war outcomes. And she made a lot of predictions. A lot of them came true, a few didn't. But I think the best way to show you uh, kind of what Caroline Dye was about and a little bit on her history is through the music. So we're gonna have a few images of her and a little bit of the songs that were inspired by her. Once again for tuning in and tune in next week where we will be discussing uh, the cemetery in London named Crossbones and we'll also be talking Crossroads. So it's a Crossroads and Crossbones kind of uh, week for us and um, as usual keep in touch with us londonconjure at gmail.com please email any questions that you have or put them in the comments if you'd like. Uh, we are also on Facebook and you can email us anytime on there as well. So keep in touch and stay tuned and we'll see you next week.